Welcome! It's been quite a while since I've done a tutorial. I believe it's been back since Fallout 3, which was a pretty straightforward one for the creation kit. But uh, I've had a couple of requests for some tutorials lately. I figured it'd be easier to just do them as video than to try and take a bunch of screenshots and whatnot. So we're going to start off today and I'm going to be looking at how to do specular maps for your custom textures using only GIMP uh, plus the DDS plugin for your export. Uh, I'll link both of those uh, down in the description below so you have direct access to them. But let's go ahead and get into it. So I have a texture here that is from my recent uh, Night Vision Scopes release and this is the rusty version as you can see. I also have the other one up here. We'll take a look at that in a little bit when it becomes important. But what we're looking at is getting our reflection maps, which we refer to as speculars. They're the ones that have the underscore S at the end, uh, to work properly with the diffuse, the color map that you've created. Now, the specular maps only use the red and green channels, and they use those channels to determine sort of how glossy the material is going to look. Think glossiness being like kind of like electrical tape where there's a shine to it but it doesn't uh, reflect a lot of light. And so that's the green channel. The red channel is going to give you that metallic where it's actually reflecting light looks really shiny and chrome. All shiny and chrome. So we're going to work on adjusting those two values to get your material to look the way you want. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is convert everything to black and white. Now you don't want this to be an actual grayscale setting because you still want to have a red and green channel within it. So we're just going to use saturation to bring everything down. So I have selected a current layer. I'm just going to go to the saturation setting here under colors. And I'm just going to drag that all the way down. And then I'm going to go through, I'm going to use control F to apply that to every layer in sequence. And I hit game, keep hitting control G for some reason. There we go. So from here you can go one of two ways. You can, while it is grayscale, adjust the brightness and contrast of everything to kind of see how bright it would be in that grayscale coloring. So let's take, I believe this is, yep, my primary layer up here. So I could adjust how bright I'm gonna want this to show up later while it is in grayscale. So let's let's say I want this really reflective, very very metallic looking. So I'm going to pull brightness and contrast way up. Way way up here. So now I've got a nice I can see the detail in the texture with the black and the white. The white very bright areas are going to be much more reflective. The darker areas where it's kind of rusty will reflect far less. So you can do that while it is black and white first. I like to convert to just the red and green layers before I adjust brightness because I feel like that gives me a better idea of what the values are going to be. So I'm going to go all the way back up to the top here. I'm going to apply another change to all these layers. Let's go to curves. So let me scroll down to where you can see the layer I'm working with. It's this little rectangle of tape down here. I'm going to set this to blue because we're only going to use the green and red uh, channels. So we're going to drag the blue down to where it shows nothing. So I'm going to select blue channel. I'm just going to pull this all the way down. Now there's no blue coming through. It has adjusted the colors. Now we're looking at this sort of yellow balance between green and red. And again I'm going to go apply that to every layer. Okay. 
Now, if you've got some overlapping layers, like I've got some here that are uh, dodge layers overlapping something else, you'll want to flatten those before you do this next step. Uh, but we're just going to work with a single layer that doesn't have any of that extra stuff. We're going to go back to the same one we were looking at before. This primary layer, for sort of the middle of the scope. And you would just do the same thing that I was looking at before when it was in black and white. But now that we have some color, we're going to do it with the color. So I like to pull mine uh, to a starting point around 100 for both the brightness and the contrast. So somewhere between 90 and 110, somewhere in that range, gets you a decent starting balance. This is really good right here for bare metal. It's gonna give you something that's nice and reflective, but you can still kind of see the color. You might wanna go just a little bit darker if it's not just like silver or black. So if you're trying to get some like copper shine out of it. You might want to go just a little bit darker so you can actually see that coppery color. But somewhere around these higher values usually gets where you're trying to go. So that'll give you a nice balance where this brighter stuff is more metallic and as I said before this darker stuff where it's rusty is going to reflect far less. But let's say that you don't want it to look metallic. Let's say that you want it to look more like that glossy electrical tape. So let's jump down to my little tape layer here. And basically you just want this to look more green. So I could use colorize for that, right? But trying to adjust that value and get rid of the blue and not make it look weird is kind of a pain. It's far simpler to simply go to curves, go to that red channel. And because we're trying to get rid of the metallic reflection, we're going to pull that red channel down so the green, the pure glossiness, comes out more. I'm going to pull it about halfway down so we still get a little bit of reflection, but not so metal looking. So you can see I did that here. Here's the uh, texture, the diffuse texture for the regular, the newer looking scope. And you can see I have this down here in the uh, little corner. This is the texture that I used for the eyepiece that's made out of rubber. And because I wanted it to look a little bit glossy, but not look like it's metallic, I changed that to this green, but I kept it a little bit darker because I didn't want really bright glossiness. Brightness will make it sh uh, a more noticeable sheen to it. So now the rubber gets a little bit of that glossy sheen over it, but not to the extent of like electrical tape. Keep going back to that example. So once you're done, so here's what I ended up with. You can see that I go for a pretty high contrast because I want, I just want parts of the scope to pop and high contrast will give that to you. So if you look at my scope you can see that sort of the damaged edges on certain parts of the scope where it's really bright here, those have that more reflective like it's been sort of chipped down to the bare metal. Uh, they have that effect because of the high contrast of the black versus the brighter sections. But once we are ready to save and we've adjusted everything, you'll want to go to merge visible layers and this will flatten your image but it will leave out any layers that you're not currently showing. Because when we export as our DDS, it will only export the current selected layer, so we have to have all of those down on the same layer. So we'll just go to File, Export As, and I don't want to accidentally overwrite everything, so I'm going to put it here. We typically put a underscore S just to tell us which texture it is. You can see that I have one here already that is just a, a failed one. So we'll do underscore S, export, and I use compression uh, DXT5. DXT3 should also work. I've been told that you're supposed to use one of the 3DC ones because it saves as a normal map, but that gives sort of a blue hue over the whole thing. And while it doesn't use the blue channel, 
uh, I find it just sort of unnecessary because, well, it doesn't use the blue channel. So you can save it in the same format, DXT3 or DXT5, whatever you save your other textures as. And make sure you have generate mitmaps on, and you see that you cannot select anything else other than the selected layer. That's why we had to flatten it. I'll hit OK, and you're good to go. Now, this is a lot of trial and error compared to using something like Substance Painter, but this is just to show you that it is possible. Once you got it to a point where you kind of like it, I would suggest saving at this point where you have all your layers separated still, so you can test it in the game, figure out what parts you like and don't like, and then come back in here and adjust that brightness and contrast again until you get to where you want it. Uh, it usually takes me about three passes or so. I start with a base, and then I go look in game, I see which parts need to be brought up in brightness and contrast, I adjust from there. Usually I end up going a little too far on my second pass, so then I adjust a little bit further back down. Um, but it, a good place to start is your base, bring the brightness and contrast up to that 90 to 110 area, check from there, and then probably bring it back down more than likely. Alright, that's it for this one, and in a little bit I'll be working on another tutorial. So stay tuned. Take care.